Hi, I'm Omar with the Tor Observant Messianic Entrepreneurs Group, and uh, well, we're building a group of entrepreneurs that are followers of the way. If you have a business, would like to have a business, are interested in entrepreneurial ventures, maybe you want a side hustle to help make ends meet, or you just want more control of your own destiny, or, or at least you would rather it be directly from God's hand to your mouth and not by way of some job. <laughs> This, is, this group is for you. So we've been talking about the um, customer value optimization or the conversion funnel. And you might have, you know, everybody talks about getting people into your funnel, the top into your funnel, the bottom into your funnel, there's sales funnels. I mean, the, the word funnel is used so often that it's kind of lost its meaning. Um, people really just, you know, they just throw the word around. They just mean, you know, getting people into your off, you know, your they don't really have much of a meaning. <laughs> I mean, they kind of do, but it's it's just vague and, and undescript, non-descriptive. So that's what this is about, is to help you break down each step of the uh, conversion funnel and actually uh, understanding its components, what it's for, and how to implement it in your business. So today we're up to the tripwire offer. This is step four in conversion funnel the first step we if you remember it's finding your your right product to market fit and that would include getting to know your customer very very well matter of fact knowing which of your mark which customers out of your market you're going to specifically specialize in because if you try to please everybody in your market you'll end up resonating with very little of any of your market and you'll make a lot less sales where if if you segregate down and niche down to a sub niche of your market and you hyper focus on them speaking to their needs dealing with their specific unique requirements you're going to sell way more even though you took a lot of the people in your market and you almost alienated them by just specifically speaking to one segment um, that's just how it works you know it, it sounds counterintuitive but if you, you know, like the quote goes, if you try to please everyone, you'll wind up pleasing no one. So just, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, the second step is figuring out your traffic source. Now traffic, uh, people tend to make traffic way bigger than it really is. Today's time uh, in, in history, traffic is a, um, a very common commodity. There's traffic everywhere. You can, I mean... What we would consider poor traffic sources today, just not even 50 years ago, would have been a great traffic source and people would have paid a lot of money for it. So, um, you know, and then also people have gotten addicted to free. Uh, free traffic is usually the worst. I mean, it, compare it, to compare it, uh, it's like smoking crack to lose weight. It will work but there's probably some healthier alternatives and the other side effects are not always the greatest. So just keep that in mind. And then the next step, the third step in the uh, conversion funnel is your lead magnet. And your lead magnet solves a specific problem for a specific segment of the market. And I would even go further to say that you want this to be a specific problem for a specific segment of the market for a specific offer. Now you may have multiple offers. If you're a carpenter, you may build decks. That's one offer. You may also remodel kitchens. That's a different offer. When you're making your offers, you want to make one at a time. Don't confuse the issue. Again, if you um, it's almost like trying to please everyone. If you try to tell them about everything you do every time you make contact, because making contact and buying ads or, or all the effort into social media, it's a lot of work. So you want to maximize how much you get out of it. And I, I totally understand. But the temptation is to now just send them to a sales page that tells them about everything you do. It's not specific. You're not addressing a specific problem. And you're also just, it's kind of like, you know, the guy on, on an early, you know, first or second date that just overwhelms the woman with all of the possessions that he has. She doesn't care. And the more that he brags about them, even though he may think 
it's just saying, hey, I'm, I'm your man. I got all these covered. She doesn't hear it that way. The same with your customers. When you say, hey, I can do bathroom remodels and decks and I'll finish out your basement or I could even patch holes in your roof if you need to. Got some siding that needs, I'll do it all. When you say that right away on each ad, you're just confusing the issue and it's kind of like with the you know woman, you're just bragging about all the things you have and they don't care. They have a specific problem. So make sure you're, you're, you're addressing that specific problem and capturing them onto an email list. Then you can start to uh, go further with that. Now that's where this, com this step comes in. Offer a tripwire. So now that you're generating opt-ins, you're building your email list, that's awesome. But technically, you still haven't even begun the first rule in Jay Abraham's Laws of Business Growth, and that's increase the amount of your customers. Well, right now, you're just increasing your prospects. Prospects are not customers. You can't take prospects to the bank any more than you can take likes or subscribes or any other social metrics on social media. Like any marketer that tells you that they're going to gain you in and presence on a social media platform and get you more likes, consider hiring someone else. You want to hear someone that says, I'm going to run this ad, we're going to run it in this location, we're going to make this offer for this thing, and then we will know we got results because it got conversions. <laughs> and then those conversions went on, some of them went on to make purchases. So you, you really want somebody who's going to speak in specifics and tell you about stuff that you can, you can track and you can be accountable for. If a marketer or an advertiser is telling you vague, you know, just we're going to get your presence out there, we're going to increase your brand awareness or some vague and ethereal term like that, fire them if you've already hired them. If you haven't, go find a, a nether option. Just trust me on that. They're going to take your money, and when it doesn't work, they're going to give you some nonsense excuse about how it just needs to get more contact points. It just needs to be at more awareness out in the public, and then it'll start to convert. And that is absolutely 100% not true. If it doesn't work the first time, don't do it again. Fix it, then try again. So anyways, a uh, little bit of a tangent, but back to um, the tripwire offer this is so you need this is so you can convert your customers or your prospects into customers and that's literally the only reason that a tripwire exists it's not I mean it's it's all psychology it's all part of the strategy and it's all a way to apply these strategies and psychology in an applicable and practical way. Because uh, we could talk theory all day long, but theory isn't going to, you're not going to deposit theory into the bank. You need something that you can actually take action on. And that's what I'm hoping this uh, multi series core uh, videos on customer value optimization and the conversion funnel is um, going to help. So, Typically, a tripwire is a low ticket. It's a super low ticket offer. Now, typically, you'll find one from one to twenty dollars, but that doesn't mean you can't have a. a I've seen them as high as eight hundred dollars. I'm sure there's even more expensive ones. It really just depends on what your core offer cost. If your core offer is a million dollars, well, a thousand dollar tripwire is probably a really good deal. <laughs> Whereas in, you know, if your core offer is a $400 course on, you know, how to uh, sustainably homestead, you know, and bring in a living while doing it, you know, you, you may have a course for $400. Well, now you might want to sell something for $7 or $17 as a, a low ticket offer. But the, the point is, is the goal is really to fundamentally change the relationship from prospect to customer and even for a mere dollar this change takes place psychologically and once somebody has given you money a mere dollar again 
now psychologically they cannot help they, they have no place else but to uh, compartmentalize you as an expert that is worthy of the money that you're paid because for one they just gave you money why would they you know why would they think of themselves as idiots it's just not how human brains work <laughs> so um, unless you fail to deliver what you promised then they might you know regret it but that's the whole point that's the second point of a tripwire is to really prove to them you know what you're talking about get them good results but you do it at a discount comp at cost really or even at a loss depending on how much more you're going to make on the back end uh, but your your goal is is to show them that you know what you're talking about you are the expert and you can do it and you got them you got them a taste of it at a cost cheaper than all of your competition is doing so it's uh, it's kind of a win-win for everyone. Uh, you might think, oh, I'm only giving you a $5 charge, so I'm only going to give you the $5 version of the service. Well, if you do that, you're missing the point, and you're failing to, to not only understand the, the concept of a tripwire, but also the concept of give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's not give because you know they're going to give you something back. Now, we are establishing this conversion funnel systematically so that, you know, a certain percentage is just naturally by numbers, the numbers game, going to take the next step. And because of that, you're going to make a profit on the back end. And here's the beautiful thing. Because it does align with the scriptures and you are giving a lot more, you're very heavily up front with the free lead magnet, your tripwire is at cost or at a loss, we call those loss leaders, is just a different term for the same concept, really. Uh, then you actually, on the back end, the few people who go that much further, they give so much more that it makes up for it, and then some. So it's, um, it's I'm, not, I'm not trying to trick you into manipulating the, the scriptures, I'm just pointing out how it applies in even practical ways. Uh, and these these uh, conversion funnels are more than proven, so it's it's just you know reality. It's, why wouldn't God put it in the scriptures? If it's truth, it's truth. It, let's let's operate on it instead of ignore it. So, anyways, the most uh, the most common way that you make a tripwire that irresistible offer is by selling it in, in at cost or at a loss. So, you're not trying to make a living from this. You're trying to acquire buyers because there's nothing more valuable than a list of buyers. So when you understand this process, um, you'll understand that this is the most, the single most powerful addition you can make with your business, even though you make no direct profit from it. So when, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, all this stuff up front is too much work, well, maybe you're not cut out to be a servant. Uh, if you are, you know, if you are going to apply biblical principles to your business, use, you know, Torah, um, Torah concepts and ways of being, you know, they should apply to everything, including how we make a living. I would challenge you to apply them there and take the time and do the extra work and be a servant up front to your customers. I, I, I promise you it's, it's really going to pay off in spades on the back end. So, um, anyways... Uh, let's talk about examples. So if any of you are old enough to remember Columbia House Records, uh, up until that point, they, uh, or up until they kind of went the way of the internet or, or whatever, Columbia House Records with their buy 13 records or tapes, 13 CV CDs, DVDs later at a time, all for a dollar. And then afterwards, you're automatically signed up to their monthly. They'll send you one, and if you want it, you, you pay for it. If you don't want it, you send it back. Now, that's a continuity program, and we'll talk about that in the future. But right now, what we're talking about is, is just that tripwire. They gave away 13 CDs or whatever for a buck. Now, that is probably at a loss. I'm, I'm sure that it cost them a little bit more than a dollar to make 13 CDs. I don't know. Maybe it didn't. But... Uh, the, the cool thing is, is they actually sold out, outside of the actual technical music industry. They were a licensed distributor, a, a maker and distributor of CDs. They made more and sold more than any other company on earth at the time. 
Now it's actually Starbucks that sells more CDs than in physical CDs than any other company on earth. And that's because, you know, almost nobody's selling them anymore. And when you go into Starbucks, you hear that nice background, peaceful music. And then there's the CD up by the front that says, if you like this music, here it is. That's how they do it. It's, it's actually an impulse purchase uh, or, or an upsell uh, that they have right next to the counter. Uh, profit maximizer, if you will. So just fun trivia. But um, basically the types of tripwire offers you can do is there's uh, physical products. They make great tripwire offers. I'm going to date myself again, but if you recall Sports Illustrated with their football phone back in the day, that was a example of a physical product that's a tripwire. You know, when you join, they'll send you this free football phone. So, um, so there's physical products. Uh, you can do physical books. Physical books, I'm sure if you've been paying attention to some of these different offers online, you might have seen the uh, get my free book. I will ship it to your house for free. You just pay shipping. It's uh, it's literally called the free plus shipping model. It's um, if you recall back to movies like uh, Ocean's Eleven, there was a scene where they they were trying to to get to a certain point so they could complete their 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 mission, and they they had to pull off some kind of like small time con. And they had some stupid name for it, you know. They're like, we could do a looky-loo. And then, you know, somebody chimes in, well, where are we going to find a, you know, a dwarf and a, you know, fairy at this late a notice? Yeah, or something silly, you know. They just And they just listed off a handful. Well, in marketing, they actually have those terms, you know. They, they, they have the same concepts, you know. You can literally sit around with a bunch of direct response marketers and you throw out the term free plus shipping and everybody in the room knows what I'm talking about. Like, it's it's just they're going to be like, okay, well, we sell, we send them a book or we send them a physical object. Well, we send them free plus shipping. So, you know, anyways, that is an option that you can do. Now, usually these books are self-published. They're, uh, they're, you know, you're not going to have an ISBN number. You can. There's no reason why you can't. Um, you also will uh, find these books are, are not... They're more like they're shortened books. They're 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 many. You know they're not a full two three hundred book pages uh, book, and they don't. You know they they um they introduce you to a topic, but then they further on get you know the goal of the back end is to get you to buy something else. So that's um. But anyways, that doesn't mean you can't just send out your book if you wrote a book. Uh, you know I think to myself uh like uh Nathan Reynolds is an example. He's got a book. You know they he sells the book. You know, so he might have a different, you know, model if, if he doesn't, you know, but if he were to build, I don't know, some kind of like adventure nature course on the back end, you know, he could give the book away for free. And then maybe on the back end, he could have resources or a course that helps people who have been involved in similar situations to him. Um, you know, a path or, or, or practice that they can do that will help them, you know, overcome some of the specific issues that they would have as a result of their upbringing, you know, so that would be just uh, just a random example that I can think off the top of my head, you know, so he might, you know, if he were to do that and he were to have this mentorship course on the back end, it would be a continuity program, coincidentally enough, but he might want to offer his book for free up front as, as a giveaway, you know, also I've seen uh, a very powerful model where um, nonprofits will use a book. They will take somebody else's book, buy it in bulk, and then with a very nice letter, you know, give it away to all of their the people on their list. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's the give and it shall be given unto you, you know. And then on the back end, they remind them that it's fundraising time and they need help with all these donations. And you'd be amazed how many more people will give because they gave the book up front. They gave something of value to the people first you know, something that relates to what they're interested in. And that's why they're signed up to that list. So, so that's an option. Now, service-based businesses, uh, you might want to just give a steep discount. You know, that, that's, I'm, I'm not going to lie, giving a discount is probably the laziest option you can think of. But some, uh, uh, some businesses don't really have too much of an option. So, you know, you might, um, but, you know, that's the thing. Or, now, 
again, I've mentioned before, like the, 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 a uh, service business that would help your business get listed on Google Maps, uh, in the top ranking and the three pack as they call it, uh, that might be their their profession. Now they might have a hard time getting people to cold traffic to sign up for a thousand bucks a month, uh, for that service. I mean, it's more than worth. It's probably worth twice that. Uh, however, um, you know, if they can't get people to sign up, uh, especially cold traffic, they might want to choose to spend, you know, charge twenty dollars to just set up their account for all the tech illiterate bosses that just need to get their business account set up in the first place. You know, they don't even know how to do that. So they could set that up for 20 bucks. Breaks that barrier, that psychological barrier. Now they've paid them 20 bucks. Now they're a customer. They're 10 times more likely to buy. And then it's easier to sell a certain percentage of them the full-blown monthly service of ranking them. So that's a... That's just, uh, you know, something to consider. And uh, then let's see, you know, gyms, they offer low introductory prices on fitness classes. So maybe the first month is, you know, at cost price or the first, you know, class or two you get, you know, at an at a extreme discount that just, just covers the cost, you know, the, of your, your, the teacher of the class. Um, Let's see, group Groupon. That's literally a tripwire uh, machine. That's that's the whole pur purpose of it. I mean, now Groupon makes their money selling the spaces, but the businesses that get on Groupon, they are offering tripwires. Now, unfortunately, because they're on Groupon, they have to give a good portion. Of, you know, they're giving part of that money to Groupon. You know, that uh, from their their tripwire offer. So they, you know, it becomes more of a loss leader. And then most businesses have no idea how to capture that email, how to how to build up a list, and then follow up behind on the back end. I mean, unlike you guys, because you guys are learning the customer uh, value uh, or conversion funnel, uh, and you know how to, you'll know how to implement these. And so then, if you were to use Groupon, then you would find that oh, okay, this actually pays off on the back end because you have that funnel built out to um, filter off those people who want to go further and pay more to make up the difference for the cost of getting in the, in the Groupon in the first place or, you know, the, the percentage cost that they take or whatever it is. So, um, so anyways, that's another example. GoDaddy, the domain registration uh, and, you know, website hosting service, they offer super low price domains, you know, at, uh, for the, your first time. You know, they might offer them half off. Uh, you know, the ridiculously great uh, flat screen TV deal at uh, Best Buy. They don't, they don't make a profit off of their flat screens and their laptops. That's why they can sell them so cheap. They actually make their profit off of the, um, the insurance and the geek squad on the back end. And then, of course, all the accessories, they're making profits off of those too. But if you really, you know, if you can see... You know, these are repeated multiple times. This, this is, the concept is there. You know, don't, don't worry about making your money up front. Your money's coming on a second or third offer. Uh, same with McDonald's. Now, McDonald's, it's not, per, I guess it is a tripwire in a sense. Their cheeseburger costs, um, well, after they pay all of their overhead, all of the employees, all the payroll, everything that it costs to run a McDonald's, they might make 30 cents you know, assuming they sell a certain number of cheeseburgers every month, they might make 30 cents off those cheeseburgers. And you might be tempted to think, oh, they're making all their profit off of the big, you know, the, the sheer numbers. Well, not really. They're making all their profit off of, do you want fries and a Coke with that? Because now that all of the overhead is paid, the only cost for the fries or the, the Cokes is the 10 cents for the potatoes or the syrup. Everything else is sheer profits. And now they, they literally eight times their business overnight just by adding that do you want fries and a coke with that that's literally what took them from a local mom and pop chain that was being stolen by ray Kroc into a um traded on the on the stock market corporation you know so anyways um that's uh you know just another example of you know tripwires all around us so <laughs> it's the let's see but, 
so you got to realize that even though your your this tripwire cost you your profit margin at this step you're converting the maximum number of leads into paying customers and paying customers i mean if we're talking numbers game are literally 10 times more likely to buy anything else you offer so your core offer could be 10 times the cost of your tripwire and those people who took the tripwire are 10 times more likely to take you up on it than the people who are mere prospects. So this is, this is a very strategic uh, part, of the, um, part of the conversion funnel. And it's something that very few businesses, if any, ever use. And if you're willing to take the time and put this step into your business, you will be shocked at the results that you're gonna to get towards the back end and how much easier and better the sales are gonna be when when you get people who are buying your tripwire uh, up front. So, so that is that is literally the first time what we have taken a step into increasing the amount of your customers. Now, don't get me wrong, the lead magnet is a vital step. You need that list of prospects because once you have that list of, that list of getting people onto your lead magnet is what um, stretches out your, your uh, and extends your ability to make more contact points with your customers, thus making whatever effort or money you spent to get them into your funnel in the first place, whether that be advertising, whether that be social media posts, whether that be you know YouTube videos or whatever, you know, however you get your uh, get them into your lead magnet, there's a cost to that, whether that's time and energy or that's money. And usually, especially when you're doing it professionally and paying, uh, like all professionals have always done, then you're gonna realize that if you go straight to your Buy My Stuff page or tell them everything you can do, there's not gonna be enough conversions to make that cost worth it. However, if you capture that, them onto an email list with a lead magnet, and then you start hitting them up with tripwire after tripwire, you know, four or five tripwires if you have to, one a week, uh, until you start getting some takers, and then those takers hit them up with your core offer, you're gonna do way better sales on your core offer than if you just went straight from your ad to the core offer in the first place. So uh, that's today. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, you know, tell everybody you know who's who's uh, tour observant. Uh, this includes you ladies, you Proverbs 31 gals. I think it was 31, 30, 30, yeah, 31. Um, anyways, uh, I would challenge you to read that carefully. She doesn't just ha isn't just skilled at making linens. It, there's a specific verse that says that she is good at selling her linens and delivers her goods on time. This is a merchant woman. This is a woman who understands business, who understands marketing, who understands sales, as well as the skill of making her craft uh, or her, you know, her product or service. So I just really want to challenge you that, you know, I mean, I know personally I'm looking for a Proverbs 31 woman and every woman that claims to be a Proverbs 31 woman and I start talking marketing and she gets the glossy eyed blank stare. I think that she has not really read that verse and then she no longer qualifies. You know, not, not that you necessarily wanted to qualify in my book, but <laughs> but uh, just something to consider. You know, some men are out there who are taking these details seriously. So, you know, go ahead and step up to the plate. Learn how to sell. Men, you got to provide for your family. You're worse than an infidel if you don't, according to scriptures. So, you know, these steps are going to actually increase your ability to provide, uh, to, to pull off these skills that are that are spoken highly of in scriptures. And they will also allow you to have more free time to spend with your family and your loved ones, especially if you implement all of the steps. Um, and also if you start, you know, in later time, we'll talk about things like uh, the difference between, you know, physical products or services that you have to do every single time. Somebody buys one, you got to make another one, you know, or somebody, somebody orders a, you know, a basement remodel. Well, you got to go down and do the work and you can only do it as much as you can afford a crew to do it. And you can do two if you can afford two crews. But that's that scale ability is very small, where if you have a information course like a product, um, you know, that somebody can go online and learn 
uh, oh, who's the example? The Founded Earth Brothers. That's another example that I can think of. Um, they are creating a, a earth science, a biblically based earth science course for homeschoolers that also is, um, you know, meets the standards of, you know, the national curriculums or, or whatever, so that they are, you know, there, there's actually something that you can legitimately teach your children at homeschool. Um, that is an amazing course that, you know, I would love to be a part of something, you know, not just, not their thing specifically, but I would love to be a part of maybe a, create a, a place where people can upload those courses and it can be a, uh, just a homeschool source and everybody with different skills, you know, one's earth science, another person would know, you know, like I could put a marketing course or you've got somebody else who's, who's like management, you know, business management. That's an entirely different subject than marketing. And somebody who's good at marketing may not be very good at business management and vice versa, you know, or, or you could have somebody who's really good at, you know, uh, you know, like what's the old school uh, home ec or, you know, actual physical skills, you know, put together, well, it would be awesome if somebody put together a course that taught carpentry skills, you know, and that could be uploaded to a homeschool uh, site like I'm talking about. And anyways, this, you know, these are just ideas that pop into my head. But these information courses, you know, these are you one information products, the usual physical product or service, you mark it up two to two and a half times what it costs you. Typical information product starts at 10 times the markup. It can go much higher. And once you build it, you just it's copy paste sell, copy paste sell. You know, you, you it's rinse repeat time. You don't have to you don't have to physically go out there and put on another replace another roof every time you get a job. You can you can get a sale and then they just download a PDF file or download a uh, you know or get access to a membership site you know where they can watch all the information they want every month at their own pace. So, anyways. You know, they, these are future stuff we're going to talk about, you know, different business options. I know I brought up a, a like a, a super simple side hustle, painting house numbers on curbs. But, you know, anybody who's tried it will know that, you know, unless you I would imagine younger people would have a way better time with it just because especially in an old neighborhood, because they just people like it when kids that don't have to have a job go out there and hustle anyways. They, they just get a little bit more uh friendlier treatment but that doesn't mean you know old guy can't kill it yeah <laughs> it's it's just you know it's more attitude the attitude of the seller but um you know there's still work you you know you can only knock so many houses you can only you know the, the people have to are not always home so you're going to be killing a lot of time doing that and then by the time you get the job you know can you make okay money sure absolutely uh you might have to hustle a little bit and there'll be some days better than others but there's probably better things that are easier to scale. So, you know, I'd like to talk about that. I know personally, I want to get some online location independent income coming in, uh, you know, and figure that out. And that's what all of this is about. Um, you know, maybe even uh, I pray there's somebody else out there who is really passionate about the scripture. Two can accomplish more than twice as much as one and thinks to themselves, I'm not going to try to do something on my own next to somebody doing something on my own. I'm going to try to get somebody else to do something with me. So, you know, just throwing that out there for future thoughts. But anyways, uh, thank you for joining me and I'll see you here shortly in, in another video.